Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, so at this point, you've probably seen the eight videos I've uploaded uh, with the WRX on the track. Sorry for kind of spamming your feed there. Um, if you have any recommendations on how you'd like to see kind of that footage, please let me know. Uh, I tried to break it down by fastest lap, lap, fastest lap by session, and then just the raw sessions themselves. Um, if you think there's a better way to kind of organize that information, let me know and we'll go ahead and try that out. Uh, so in this video today, I wanted to do kind of like a debrief of the, the um, event at Thunder Hill. Um, first with the tires. So if you look at the tires here, these two are the rear tires and then these two are the front tires. Um, I think this may have been the passenger side and this was the driver's side, maybe, actually might be flipped. Based on the wear on the shoulder here, this is likely the passenger side because um, we're making a lot of left-handed turns because it is a, a counterclockwise track, you're going to load up that front uh, passenger side tire. So just based on the wear, I think this was the tire. Um, Everything actually looks really good. Uh, I don't know if you can see this little dark line here. Um, it's showing me that for the most part, I am sitting on the inside of the tire and then in the turns kind of using the outside, which is what I want to see. Previously, a lot of my wear was on the shoulder to the center. So I just simply didn't have enough camber. And right now it looks like my camber is looking pretty good. The proper way to know would be to once you've identified the correct tire pressure to run for the tire in the car, uh, you can look at the temperature across the tire and uh, should be relatively even, plus or minus 20 degrees. If you got too much on the outside or too little on the inside and your pressure is correct, uh, then if you have too much on the outside, you need more camber. And if you have too much or higher temperatures on the inside, uh, you need less camber. Uh, we haven't done that yet. And the goal is at the next event, uh, to use the pyrometer and take some temperature readings, dial in the tire pressure, uh, which I think I'm pretty close already, and then dial in the suspension alignment-wise. Uh, overall, the event was great. Um, car did really good on the daily tires as well as the uh, semi-slicks, uh, better than I could have ever asked for. And I actually think there's more to give in the car um, because we haven't really dialed everything in. Um, Right now, I'm actually gonna take the car, get it up on, or at least jack up the driver's side left. We took a kind of hard hit in session six. Um, coming up on one of the turns, I cut to the inside a little too much and hit, I think the car's front left tire, went off the track before it hit the curb. And there's a very audible clunk uh, when I hit it in the video. And in person, that clunk was a lot louder. Very hard hit there. The alignment feels good still though. Uh, so the whole way home I was trying to figure out if I had caused an alignment uh, setting to slip. It was very, very windy on the way home and you could have heard that uh, during, during the events while the window was down. So the car was getting blown around and I just couldn't tell if the alignment had slipped. Um, so what I'm going to do is take that tire off inspect everything and I'll go ahead and show you what I'm looking for uh, because we do have a track event on Monday and uh, I, sometimes I try to avoid doing too much work to a car before an event because if something goes wrong you're kind of caught with your pants down. Uh, so let me get the car up and let's take a look at the driver's side tire. Alright so uh, driver's side's off up on a jack stand here. I'm gonna go ahead and take the rim off. So to and from the track, it's a little over 200 miles. And um, the reason why I was sus suspecting something had happened to the alignment was because the wheel felt like it was cocked to the left um, a little more than, than I'd started out with. And to be honest, it was cocked to the left to begin with, right? 
Um, so what I'm looking for here is some, I think I may have gotten some toe out or toe in. Um, so I'm looking at the shoulders of the tires to see if I have any scrubbing. And the inside of this tire, so what will happen is if you have toe, if we're looking at the wheel like this and you have toe out, so the, po the car's pointed this way, if it's towed out, you'll scrub all the inside of the shoulder. Uh, and then if you have toe in, you're going to scrub on the outside shoulder. Now, I'm looking at it, and uh, if anything, the this inside shoulder is like really smooth. <laughs> Uh, and that's telling me one, I don't have I don't have a, a toe issue because I'm not scrubbing it, and it's likely smooth because because of the, the excessive negative camber that we're running. So as we drove in a straight line, it just kind of wore this out smoothly. Um, I do see some shoulder wear on the outside here, uh, but that may have simply come from from the track, and it doesn't look like anything particularly excessive. Uh, however, we are going to we are going to readjust the toe anyway, um, but that would have been one of the first clues that something was wrong. Uh, so let me go put this rim down over here. Now if I come in and look um, at the wheel or the hub, um, the other thing we, we may be looking for is a camber change. Um, which I'll have to measure with the car on the ground. Now, normally I would put the hub stands on, put the cars, make sure, make sure it's level and then measure it. I'm just going to measure it with the rim on and uh, hope that, uh, measure it with the rim on and see if on both sides the camber's the same. And if they're the same number, then more than, more than anything, the, the camber hasn't slipped. And if the camber were to slip, uh, there'd be a toe change as well. So I would have seen that in the tire. All right, so here I am looking at the tie rod. Uh, so the tie rod has like a like a ball joint in, or uh, and um, know, these are starting to go bad. I think I had previously run these brakes without this brake duct set right here, and if, so I didn't have this like heat shield, and I just overheated the grease inside um, inside the, the ball joint here. Uh, it seems pretty solid and there is no real play in that ball joint so that's good to see um, I also went ahead and grabbed the wheel so you can go side to side to, to, to see if the ball joint on the tie rod is bad I went up and down as well and the lower control arm ball joint seems good um, and of course I'm not getting any play in the bearing on the hub so I think all in all, we made it out okay, and we don't really have any issues with the car. Um, we do have a track day coming up here on Monday, and so I'd likely am going to inspect the brake pads and flip them around as needed to kind of optimize pad wear. What I do want to do is measure the camber on this side and the camber on that side, just to make sure that we didn't have a camber slip. Um, so I'll go ahead and do that right now. So I've got the camera gauge set up here, and this is the external mount. So it just mounts on the rim. Um, don't have to put it on the hub stand. And it's reading 2.7. Now, the car originally had 3.1 uh, degrees of negative camber, but I'm not going to make a comparison with that number to this number, simply because now I'm not on level ground, X, Y, Z, there's a bunch of factors that can influence that. So one of the things that I want to show you is I don't have my weight in the car right now and the car was aligned with 175 pounds in the driver's seat. It's showing negative 2.7 degrees of camber and if I go ahead and just stand on this door sill it starts to change and I'm not even sitting in the uh, in the uh, driver's seat here. Uh, so that's dropping, and I think it's kind of, what, 2.6. Um, maybe if I were to sit in the car, it would actually go down a little more. Uh, so about 2.6 on that side. And what I want to see is roughly the same number on the other side. 
Um, now I can't stand on on the side of the car and look at that camber uh, readout, so I'm just going to set up the camera and then play it back. All right, so this is the passenger side and it's reading 2.4. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and stand on the driver's side door still again. Bounce it really quick and uh, hopefully the camera will record that value and I can come back and look at it. Hey guys, actually, so I double checked the passenger side tire for some toe wear. So the inside shoulder and the outside shoulder look great. Inside shoulder's nice and smooth. That means I'm rolling on it due to the negative camber and I don't see any scrubbing uh, on the outside shoulder, which tells me I'm not towed in. I'm not scrubbing um, the leading edge as making that front shoulder my leading edge of my tire. Um, it tells me toe's great all around. Um, and uh, I'm just not gonna touch it. There's, there's no reason. Um, and I'd be wasting two, two hours doing that. And um, I put so many hours actually dialing the alignment to begin with that I don't wanna screw around with it. So instead what I'm gonna do is just um, inspect the pads, swap them around, and uh, just take the car as is to the track. Um, and we will use the pyrometer uh, to measure temperature across the tire, diamond tire pressure, and then measure the, pyrom uh, measure the temperatures again to make sure that I do have enough camber all around or at least the right amount of camber or the optimal amount of camber. Uh, then based off of that data, uh, we'll come back and realign the car to see if we can further optimize uh, the contact patch. Okay, so I was looking at the pads and I wanted to show you this real quick because I talk about it in my Breaking 101 video. Uh, these pads were relatively flat, very close to being flat uh, when I took it to the car to the track. Now, if you look at it, there is a crazy uh, wear line. So if you can tell, it's diagonal, right? There's a diagonal there. Um, if you look at the pads from this direction, the pad on the inside of the rotor is way thicker than the outside of the rotor really obvious over here and um, we, if we look at this one this is from the uh, driver's side uh, again the pad on the inside of the rotor much thicker than the outside and again it's got it's got this one's pretty even uh, in terms of the line going straight down so the rotor wasn't kind of tilted in one direction or the other uh, but definitely the the leading edge of this pad is uh, much thinner than the lagging edge. I think it's by two millimeters here, right? Um, so it's worth, it's worth inspecting. I think roughly these pads, when I measured them before we went to the track, they were about anywhere between 19 and 20 millimeters. Now that I've measured them, we're looking at like 15 to 16. So we took about, you know, three to four millimeters off the pad. So Realistically, I might get another two or three track days out of these, uh, and then it's time for some new pads. Um, so that's why flipping pads is important. Uh, it can help get a little bit more out of the pads, and it really is no effort at all uh, to flip them around. Um, so yeah, that is kind of the update on the WRX after the track, and that's where we're going to head next with the suspension. Uh, thanks, for, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Take care.